We have now looked at the structure of an atom and the formation of absorption lines. But what happens once the electron is up in a higher orbit? As we saw before, electrons prefer to be in an orbit closer to the nucleus. So when an electron is in an excited state, that is, far away from the nucleus, its natural inclination is that it wants to fall back towards the nucleus. Because the orbit closer to the nucleus is the lowest energy level, when an electron falls, it has to lose energy. And where that energy goes is into the form of light. So when an emission spectrum forms, what's happening is that the electron is falling towards the nucleus, and it then emits light. As we saw before, there are different combinations of transitions. All possible combinations can occur, and each transition has its own associated wavelength. So just as with an absorption spectrum, the larger the transition, the higher the energy that is now lost, which means the shorter the wavelength of light that is emitted. So once again, we have a short wavelength which is associated with a high energy which is associated with a large transition. Where an electron's moving a small distance towards the nucleus would be a low energy and therefore a long wavelength. So the same rule applies whether you are dealing with absorption or emission. The difference is, in the absorption spectrum, these exact same lines were the lines that were missing because they had been absorbed. Now, those lines are the only lines appearing as they are emitted by the electron. So the pattern for hydrogen is going to look the same whether it's absorption or emission, the only difference is for absorption you have a complete rainbow with just a few specific lines missing. For emission it's only those few specific lines that appear. So absorption, the electron absorbs energy and moves to a higher orbit. Emission the electron moves to a lower orbit and emits light.